scientists are working on even more innovative techniques. Dr. Salia Hassan has been to meet the next generation of bodybuilders. <laughs> In 2012, my youngest brother was diagnosed suddenly with end-stage kidney disease and needed an urgent transplant. My entire family was screened as donors and luckily my other brother was found to be a suitable match and the transplant went ahead. But imagine if people like my brother could have a bespoke organ grown for them in the lab. That might sound like science fiction, but it's a lot closer than you might think. Here at the Croto Research Institute at Sheffield University, scientists are already starting to manufacture human body parts. Uh, welcome to our lab. <laughs> Showing me around is Dr. Sam Pashnatella, one of the lab's tissue engineers. Generally here we do tissue engineering of nerves. That's where we do all the skin tissue engineering to treat people with burns. That's phenomenal. It's the one-stop shop lab. 20 years ago, growing body parts was very controversial. Remember this? This freakish ear made with a plastic mould and cells from a cow was grown on a mouse to try to give it a working blood supply. But now, with the latest technology, Sam's team can grow human organs from scratch at the touch of a button. So this is a bioprinter. Um, we use this to print cells into three-dimensional tissue. So today we're going to print an ear. I have always wanted to see that happen. Just like a 3D printer, it builds complex structures layer by layer. But instead of plastics or resins, it uses human cells. And these cells, where do they come from? We can buy them in. You can buy cells commercially. Or they can be donated. Using a recipient's own cells greatly reduces the chance of rejection. So just like cooking, we start off with our cells, which okay. are in a suspension. It's like a gel. So we'll pull that into this syringe, and that's loaded into the printer. So far, bioprinters like this can only create relatively simple body parts, small bones, ears or noses. More complex organs, like kidneys, have been printed, but have been too simplistic and small for humans. Complex organs are actually very difficult because they're made of lots of different cell types. They have a lot of complex structures, which is difficult to reproduce. We're ready to go. Whilst our human ear is being printed, Sam shows me the blood vessels he's growing with another technique, biodegradable scaffolds. This is a I'm scaffold. Hold you can hold it. Be gentle. That's made of a material we invented here, which is microporous, which is what we need. So we need to have lots of holes in it so the cells can grow into it. Now, you won't be able to see those no, holes. No, I definitely They're can't. They're tiny. They're less than a tenth of a millimetre. Their cells can then grow into them. It's a bit like ivy growing on a trellis. I can see things pulsating and moving. Once grown, they behave exactly like natural blood vessels, contracting and dilating with blood flow. Tissue engineered blood vessels are actually very close to being used as a treatment for patients. So That's if somebody had a heart attack and part of the blood supply to the heart was blocked, we could implant a tissue engineered blood vessel as a bypass to go around that blockage. That's huge. Cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death worldwide. In terms of tissue engineering, it's where the biggest clinical impact is going to be in the next few years. Longer term, Sam and the team are working hard to ensure growing bespoke body organs becomes a reality. After just four hours, the ear has finished printing. Oh, my gosh. You can see all the lumps and bumps and grooves of an actual ear. It looks like glass now, but over the next few weeks, Sam will culture the ear in an incubator to grow cartilage. Skin can be grafted on, and it should work just like a real ear. It is so sci-fi. How long before we're at that stage where we will be able to make complex organs? So for bioprinting, it could be within the next 10 or 20 years. Seriously, that, that quick? That's... Could be that quick. That is amazing. Well, thanks, Salia. And mm. uh, Dr. Sam Pashnatala is here now. I mean, that was just mind-blowing. Well, Sam. thank you very much. It really was to watch. I mean, <laughs> is, I'm sure... It's nothing. Britain. Don't worry about it. What? <laughs> but, I mean, is this the beginning of the end for kind of donor transplants? 
that's the aim for, for tissue engineering is to um, have it to a point where the, the transplant donor list is uh, a thing of the past. So we have mm -hmm. organs available for people that need them at the moment. People die every year waiting for organs that, that aren't available. Mm. Yeah. And we saw the beginning of their ears there and they looked like they'd been made out of glass. So have they actually been transplanted onto a human? So Bioprinted ears haven't yet been used uh, uh, in humans, but uh, tissue engineered ears based on scaffolds, similar to the blood vessels that we saw in the video, mm -hmm. uh, have recently been used in humans for the first time in a trial in China, right. where they used them to uh, produce their uh, ears for children with malformed mm -hmm. ears. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. these were successful uh, over, over two years mm -hmm. and used to replace uh, their ears. And okay. as far as the skin is concerned, on, on that shot in particular then, how, how does that work? And are you growing skin and grafting that onto these parts and putting it onto the For those oh. uh, ears in that uh, China study, that was the, uh, the, the children's own skin that right. was sort of stretched over the, the, the ear scaffold. Right. But we can tissue engineer skin as well, so that can be used for treating uh, burns, for example, so people have uh, lost skin through, through burns or, or other trauma. Mm. We can take skin from a donor, uh, remove the donor's cells, and leaves right. behind the structural part of the skin. So like a me almost left with like a mesh Exactly, there. yeah. yeah. Then we put that onto the, the patient and the, the patient's own cells can, can grow into that. My goodness. Gosh, I really feel like I didn't try hard enough at school. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot like this, man. You're just like, gosh. I'm really tweet. worried, though, because I think the only useful thing I can really do is when I die, give my organs to somebody. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> really right. Right. That's that's not not what's the point of me? But I suppose yeah. there is an ethical question, though, isn't there, Sam? Because, you know, these advancements are, are wonderful. But as long as they use, I suppose, in the right way, because you could essentially create the perfect human, couldn't you? Or, you know, athletes could, you know, you could create an athlete that had, you know, bigger lungs or, you know, a stronger heart or even when all of it, you know, say, Matt, mm -hmm. not that I'm wishing it on you, had a cardiac arrest. Um, but you could replace his heart. You know, people could just live on and on, couldn't they? That's right. Essentially. So where's the boundaries then? So uh, as a tissue engineer, I'm in it for, for the... the the clinical solutions, so to, mm -hmm. to be able to have an, uh, an impact in medicine. Right. But going forward, there will be issues uh, outside of medicine. So tissue engineering may be used uh, in cosmetic surgery. Mm -hmm. That could oh, be happening okay. very soon. Oh, there you yeah. are, Ireland. Uh, yeah, have a look. I'm just saying, you might as well take the benefits, you know, if you want it. <laughs> yeah. It you would could be do nice an if, you could, on the <laughs> if you could just have some in your fridge that you could pop on after a night out, like yeah. a new face yeah. Yeah. day. Do you know what it reminds <laughs> me of? Have you seen the film The Island? where they mm. breed the clones. Mm. So, you know, oh. like really rich people would have clones of themselves and God forbid they were in a car accident or anything like that, their clone is ready and waiting for them to have all the pieces refit. Yeah, I mean, right. could, so, could it get to something like in that? In the future, I mean, we wouldn't have the clones. Um, at the moment, we can only do uh, small bits of tissue, uh, like uh, skin, uh, blood vessels, like uh, uh, the ones in the video. Uh, and the, these are the scaffolds that we use to, to grow the blood vessels uh, here. Wow. Um, mm. They look like a bit like alphabet spaghetti. They do. Uh, Giles, mm. don't, don't get in there and, and uh, <laughs> nibble them. <laughs> make a uh, that's in his yeah. book, that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so at the moment we can only do sort of uh, small simple tissues um, but in the future we'd be able to do uh, whole organs this is crazy. and really? we wouldn't do them in clones uh, but they could be an insurance policy exactly yeah. so they could be produced ahead of time and then should you have a requirement for them they would be available because at the moment the time to produce these organs is, is, is a and long time how it's far ahead I mean you're talking about the future there Sam how far ahead do you do you see that being uh, small bits of tissue are going to start becoming used in the clinic within the next few years. Blood vessel could be within the next year. Uh, whole organ is a bit further away. Could be 10 years, right. maybe 20. But I would say uh, within our lifetimes, certainly.